The following show features stories from ADRA International. ADRA is the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, a ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We strive to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and share God's love and compassion to people in every corner of the world. Each story you see in this series represents our mission to change the world one life at a time. To learn more, please visit us online at adra.org. For the past thousand years, the Romani people have been without a country to call their own. They have been forced to the edges of society, unable and often unwilling to conform to the societal norms of the countries that host them. I don't think there's any country that would not say the Roma are not a problem because of the incompatible traditions. Today, there are an estimated 14 million Roma, with the vast majority living in Central and Eastern Europe. The conditions are quite bad. Some of them are so poor that the houses, I mean, you can't even consider them houses. The places where they're living in, they are about to fall. If that breaks, everyone within it will all die because the roof will fall on top of them. So we've seen a lot of handicaps, we've seen a lot of uh, deaths, infant mortality. And that's always very sad because we know it is 100% preventable. So the real question is, what do you do to affect change in the long term? Is the community going to be better because of the seed that you've been able to plant? Putting your heart into it, that's really the secret to success. But in the midst of this incredible suffering, there is still a spark of hope. I think that's one of the big challenges that we face on this earth, to recognize that not everyone's the same as me, as me and that's okay, and maybe it's even good. God's heart must be so unimaginably big that he has the ability to care about so many people, so much suffering. This world of ours is more beautiful, more complicated, and more inspiring than we could ever imagine. My name is Sanjay, and this is a story of a journey with Adra to serve a hurting world. I've spent the last six months seeing a side of our planet that not many people get to see, witnessing the most incredible challenges and the most extraordinary hope. Together, we've got a chance to impact the world in a whole new way. This is A Closer Walk. Albania is a small country in southeastern Europe that sits just north of Greece along the Adriatic Sea. There are long stretches of sparkling coastline and mountain ranges that rise up out of fertile farmland. Although it's less than 60 miles from the Italian coast, its long history of communist rule and status as a closed state until the early 1990s has made it a very different country than its Western European neighbors. Among those that call Albania home are part of the ethnic group known as Roma, a group which migrated to Europe from India over a thousand years ago. The name Roma stems from their common language, Romani, but in many places they are still known by their derogatory misnomer, Gypsy. Because the majority of Roma live outside the system of government, they are often undocumented and therefore uncounted. The estimates on the number of Roma living in Albania vary wildly, from 1,000 to 120,000. In the city of Fushkruya, an hour outside the capital city of Tirana, there's a large community of Roma living in a makeshift slum along the banks of a polluted river. They live crammed into crudely built shacks and unfinished structures alongside dogs and chickens, surrounded by waste and filth. But the problems faced by the Roma are not just the unfavorable conditions in which they live. It's also the discrimination they face on a daily basis. We are living actually in a society where we tend to discriminate these uh, groups that are left, left behind and are not really so progressed as we are. Christy has been working with the Roma in Fushkuria for several years and has witnessed firsthand the discrimination they suffer. You have the right to go into a public institution and ask for its service. Even though the law is saying that, uh, we see that this is not happening actually. And 
Roma people are those who really get discriminated and they suffer from this social exclusion every day, each day of their life. Rezi works alongside Christy in trying to help integrate the Roma community into Albanian society. Going every day here and seeing that the people are suffering and you can't do anything, this is really very difficult. While I was with them in the Roma community, Christy and Rezi got word that 15-year-old Adelina was in the hospital with her malnourished baby, Ledio. Without money for proper food or medicine, Adelina has been unable to care for her son. We went to Adelina's mother-in-law's house to find out if there was anything we could do to help. They've been feeding that baby on tap water and sugar for six months. And so this six months old baby um, was not fed properly for six months because the mother did not have breast milk because she was only 15. And the children are malnourished. Uh, they usually don't live up to the first year. So, so we have a lot of sickness and disease both in the parents and in the, in the babies themselves. Two days they left her alone in the hospital because they said we can't support her anymore because we don't have enough money to support her. So we have to come here, go begging, take some money and then go back again. We have no uh, support from the government, we are unemployed. We don't know where to go, so we live in these conditions and there is nothing that we can do. So the baby is in great danger and we have to do something to help him with some simple supplies for now. So we've seen a lot of handicaps, we've seen a lot of uh, deaths, infant mortality. And that's always very sad because we know it is 100% preventable. When the baby was born, he was three kilos, but now he is, he is six months. He is four kilos. Just one kilo yeah. increase in weight over six yeah. months. In six months, yes. Yeah, we're going now to a drugstore because we need to buy milk for the baby. Christy and Rezi have to visit three separate pharmacies to find one that accepts the payment vouchers used by the Roma. We don't have enough money to buy even the most basic of supplies. I was surprised that we were buying medication to bring into the hospital but I was even more surprised when we finally arrived. There was no one even there. I didn't see any medical personnel. I don't see any equipment. It's, it's like an abandoned building. This is the capital city for crying out loud. There's nothing. The stories featured in this series represent the mission of ADRA International. At ADRA, we believe that everyone deserves health, safety, and the ability to provide for their family, regardless of circumstance. Following in Christ's footsteps, we serve our brothers and sisters worldwide through food and clean water access, education, establishing ways to earn an income, and disaster response. To learn more, visit us online at ADRA.org. Rezi, Christy, and I arrived at the hospital in the capital city of Tirana to bring some basic supplies to Adelina and her malnourished baby, Ladio. I was shocked at what we found. There was no one even there. There's nothing. Wait a second, this is the biggest hospital in Tirana. And then we go inside into this room, all I see is this, this tiny baby in a bed. There's paint chipping off the walls, it's cramped, there's no nurses coming in, but these are the conditions that a child in such need is supposed to recover in. The healthcare system here is basically non-existent especially for the Roma population who are being discriminated every step they go, especially in hospitals where they're often turned away, where babies do not receive proper care, where not even Albanian citizens receive proper care. Um, it is just a liability to, to be born into this world sick. It's immediately clear that Albania's failing infrastructure and practice of discrimination can be a deadly combination for any of the Roma who are sick or in need of help. Mm -hmm. 
To get a little more detail about Albanian history and some insight on how the Roma have been treated, I met with Irdi, who works with the Roma in Fushkruja. And since I'm American, he took me to the obvious choice, the George Bush Cafe, a small coffee shop that memorializes the American president's 2007 trip to this small town. After the Second World War, uh, the Albania uh, turned into a communist country, and for 50 years we were completely locked, same like today's North Korea. Being locked for 50 years, they have not been able to be open-minded and to see enough, and as such we're not mingled and, and, and mixed up with other societies, other cultures, other races. And when they see someone who's even a bit different from them, in mindset, in lifestyle, in color, uh, they think, oh, that's wrong, we're right. As such, there was not much investment in the Roma community, there was no support in the Roma community. They were left to deal uh, themselves with their own problems. At this point, they're all closed within their own community and some of them, especially some of the women of the community, they cannot even get out of their own community. Irdi wanted to show me where many of the programs take place, so we headed across Fushkuria to the Adra Community Center. It's right outside of the community, which encourages the Roma, and the women in particular, to venture out. After getting to know them, after working for a while with them, we uh, got the other the facility just outside their own area. But later on, with different projects, we managed to get them out of the community, because earlier on, they would never, never, ever come out of the community. Mosa is one of the women who has taken advantage of the courses being offered and uses it as an opportunity to get out of the community, if only for a few hours. One of those projects is an adult literacy course that teaches women reading, writing, and other basic life skills. At the same time, we're building the social skills, like punctuality, like reliability, a concept of time and date. The projects sound much easier than they actually are because we really have to start from, from ground zero, from, from where there's nothing. After learning all the skills, the way to integrate them within the society, the Albanian society, it's through teaching them some professions and then finding them some jobs as such, this, this uh, saloon, hair saloon, here is where we provide some of the courses, the hairdressing course for some of the girls. We often think of people in poverty and we think we've got to do everything for them, but in reality, they're intelligent people, they're resourceful people, often more resourceful than us, but they, what they lack is the actual resources. <laughs> And at the same time, the tailoring course, where we provided all the sewing machines and all the tools needed for the girls to learn a certain profession, which they can use for their own selves or the community. And will help them mix up with the society, because if you have to work with the people of this society, you'll have to have friends within that society, you will integrate little by little. That's why this vocational project is important. Vocational training is a key step in giving Roma a chance at joining the rest of society. So if we can give them the resources, they can create their own solutions and create their own dignity along the way because part of lifting yourself out of poverty is actually rediscovering your own meaning and your own purpose and taking control of your life again. Their mindset will change, their lifestyle will change as well. They'll adapt to the way their society works as well. But even with their proven success, the vocational programs are still outside of what many Roma consider important. For the young Roma in particular, there is a lot of pressure to leave the vocational program and pursue what is seen as the most important thing a teenager can do, get married. All the hormones start as well, and of course they like the boys, they like uh, hanging out with each other, and of course, like every other teenager in the world, they have romantic relationships. It's just. In this culture, those romantic relationships are not just on and off, the first love, but they end up definitely in marriage. There are no real statistics on the number of Roma teenagers who are married, because they are not registered in any official capacity. But what is very clear as soon as you enter the Roma community is that there is almost no one who is 15 years old and is not married. 
because as soon as a boy is seen with a girl in public, that's it. They're stuck with each other. The stories featured in this series represent the mission of ADRA International. At ADRA, we believe that everyone deserves health, safety, and the ability to provide for their family, regardless of circumstance. Following in Christ's footsteps, we serve our brothers and sisters worldwide through food and clean water access, education, establishing ways to earn an income, and disaster response. To learn more, visit us online at adra.org. There are a lot of traditions that set the Romo apart from the cultural norms of the countries they live in, but none are quite as controversial as their tradition of teenage marriage. It's just in this culture, those romantic relationships are not just on and off, the first love, but they end up definitely in marriage because as soon as a boy is seen with a girl in public, that's it. When you think about a 12 or 11 year old child getting married, uh, getting pregnant, having children, raising children, getting married to another boy uh, who is also 13, 14 years old. So, so we think these, these are children. We, it is not possible, it's, it sounds shocking at first. For us, we would say it's child abuse, etc., etc. But of course we can't just go in the culture and say and, and judge it. Because we have to take it as what it is, it's tradition. This is a rich culture. It's a culture which has its own value system, its own social norms and social behaviours. In learning to live together, you don't have to have uniformity to have unity. And I think that's one of the big challenges that we face on this earth, to recognise that not everyone's the same as me, as me, and that's OK, and maybe it's even good. We have to integrate the population with their traditions, but um, to make them acceptable to society as well. One of the best ways to begin integrating the Roma into the rest of society is by giving them the opportunity to do things that other people regularly get to do. Today, Christy and Rezi are taking a bus full of young Roma teens to spend the day at Shenzhen, a beach town on the Adriatic Sea that is a popular destination for Albanian beachgoers. Like many Albanian beaches, Shenzhen is a mix of high-rise hotels, colorful umbrellas, and waterfront vendors peddling treats to throngs of tourists who flock to the seaside during the summer months. Most of the Roma boys have only been to the beach a handful of times in their whole life, so this in many ways is a very new experience. They live day to day, so they don't really worry about next week because it's not a concept for them. So they don't think about the future at all, which means they can enjoy today because they just never think of tomorrow. But even during a fun day at the beach, these teens are never far from the difficult realities of their life. We talked with Ibrahim, a young man from the Roma community that shared with us his experience of being married when he was still a child. He had three wives, and the first one was when he was 12 years old, and the wife of him was 11 years old. And uh, in that time, her mother decided for him. The mother of him liked very much this, do this, this girl mm -hmm. and said to Ibrahim, look, she is a very be beautiful, she is a very nice girl, she is helping her mother in housework, so we think that that is the one for you. The integration programs are starting to shift the way the Roma teens are thinking. Although it is too late for Ibrahim to have any real chance at having back his childhood, he can at least envision a very different future for his children. <laughs> I get married really young and I don't want that my children have the same. And because when I get married I had I suffered a lot for this and now I want that my children to be integrated at school and then they can continue the school. And then after the after the, the when they finish the school they can get married. And breaking that cycle will be no easy task. 
After the beach, we got a chance to go with Ibrahim to the home he shares with his parents, and it started to become clear how ingrained the tradition of teenage marriage is for Roma families. Your mother and your father, they sleep here? Uh-huh. two. You sleep here? Yes. Mm -hmm. They put a mattress, and he and his wife, they sleep here, on the ground. Wow. So all in this space right here, yeah, and they out sleep. there are nine yeah. people. Yeah. I met Ibrahim's parents, who themselves were married as teenagers, and see teenage marriage as an important part of the Roma culture. There, in that picture, is my brother, and he is the one that got married at 10 years old. 10? Yeah, and his wife was 9 years old. This is the reason that I could not say no to my parents because my brother was 10 years old and he got married. So I, I was 12, he said, and I had to get married. Part of getting married early includes an increase in responsibility, and many families see the birth of a child or the addition of a daughter-in-law as an extra set of hands to help the family survive. It's very common for children who are married to take on the full responsibilities of the family. As Ibrahim's parents watched him build a gate for the back of their home, it was obvious that even at his young age, he was taking on much of the load of caring for the whole family. Children who are forced to take on these difficult tasks, combined with extreme poverty and a lack of resources, can put Roma kids in all kinds of dangerous situations. I got a call that three children had been burned by a fire in their home, and the fire came from a gas that they mm -hmm. trying to make lunch. So there was a gas explosion at our yeah. home? Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, Christy, we have to go to visit them. Yeah. Maybe we can help them. The stories featured in this series represent the mission of ADRA International. At ADRA, we believe that everyone deserves health, safety, and the ability to provide for their family, regardless of circumstance. Following in Christ's footsteps, we serve our brothers and sisters worldwide through food and clean water access, education, establishing ways to earn an income, and disaster response. To learn more, visit us online at ADRA.org. In the short amount of time I've spent with the Roma, I've witnessed the extreme poverty they live in and the discrimination they face when trying to get even the most basic medical help. Christian Rezzi told me that one of the young Roma boys had been badly burned when a gas cooking stove exploded. I couldn't imagine the conditions he must be in. You know, we were walking up, and I knew we were going to go visit this this boy who's been in this explosion. But I I really wasn't prepared for it. You just kind of see his family there, and you see his dad. I just. I'm sure inside of him, he's just like, what, what can I do? Uh -huh. Okay, this is one of the medicines that we need to die for. There's just nothing there to help them through this. And that's what I felt like when something happens, there's no safety net. There's just a sense of helplessness. So after you, you go to the hospital, get treated, and then after that, that's it. They're on their own to have to go through the healing process yes, and medications yes, yes. and all of that. The doctor said to him, you can have your child back home, just buy some medication and pay attention to him. That's all, we can do anything else. And they would have to buy the medications yes, yes. themselves. Yeah. There's no emergency fund, rainy day fund that the family can tap into and take them to a specialist. You look at his face and you know that he's in pain. Imagine the suffering that kid has to go through where he doesn't have medicine, where he doesn't have help, where he doesn't have anything to really help him cope with the rest of his life. So 
I wish not, and I pray that God helps him, but I'd never be surprised if the worst would happen to this kid. But fortunately for Alessio, Christian Rezzi will be able to buy the medications that he needs to stay healthy. Christy and Rezzi and Erdi, these are young people who could be doing so many other things, so many other things. This is not a job for them. This is a calling. And when you see the way that they interact with these kids, it's not just a show. It's not just at arm's length. They are in with the kids. They love the kids. It is the most beautiful thing that I can have. It has been an experience to work with the Roma children, to see the beautiful work that we are doing with them. And they are really thankful that we did this for them. God's heart must be so unimaginably big that he has the ability to care about so many people, so much suffering. I was just kind of overwhelmed because for me, I can only take so much. But he cares about every single one of those Roma kids, every single one of those Roma parents. That's how big his heart is. As my heart is broken by the things that break God's heart, that in his rebuilding, he will rebuild me stronger and he will rebuild me into a closer walk with him that helps me to feel more complete within my own spirituality. We cannot go to God and say, look, thanks for blessing me, thanks for providing education for me, and this is what I give to you. The only way for us to thank God is to serve his own people. The integration of the Roma doesn't mean that only their life conditions will be improved, but ours as well. Because in a society we all live together, we should contribute abilities, culture, and everything that we can give our potential. It's really day after day, one person at a time, one day at a time, one life at a time. We cannot stop the job, we cannot quit until the job is done, and if that means we're going to be here for the next decade, then so be it. This is what it has to be. There it is. All right, man. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> Bravo.